after we go through the process of dipping, then we'll take the ceramic mold at that point, which is still green, and we will cut off at the top of the main sprue rod the ceramic material around that rod, that, that metal rod that's down inside. We'll take it and turn it upside down. We'll do the large tank, which is called a burnout tank. The burnout furnace is simply a simply a stainless steel tank that I purchased at a salvage yard. It's a quarter of an inch thick and I put a chimney on the top of it or a flue that's curved or it will blow the, the flames out at a curl at, at a different level instead of straight up in the building. And the bottom of the tank I cut it into and put legs on it and a hole in the bottom where we can drip it out into the drain it out into the pan below. But all that's yeah all of that's made Every, every piece I have is handmade except for the furnace. We'll take that furnace up to about 1500 degrees and we will lose the wax and it will be caught in a, in a pan below the furnace. And that during the time that we are burning out the wax, we are curing the mold and it will become a ceramic from the green mold that was put in. Take that ceramic mold back out of the tank. We'll take it over to a table. We'll lay it down. We'll inspect it all over to see if there's any cracks or any little holes that may have developed while we were firing it in the burnout furnace. Turn the molds back upside, back upright, and we set those in a sand pit. And then we lower the other tank back over the top of it and we preheat those molds back up to where they are cherry red or up to about 1500 degrees and we do that because we want to keep them hot because if we they were cold and we tried to pour the hot metal we'd have a tremendous reaction that we're going from hot metal to cold ceramic shell it would not not cast it would crack it may, it may even expel the metal out of it if there's moisture in it so at that point after we we started firing up the moles that are in the sand tank now. We will fire the furnace, we'll charge the furnace first of all with metal into the crucible. Then we will fire the furnace, close the lid, and we will continue to lay pieces of metal on top of the furnace to take out any moisture that might be in the metal. Uh, then we will insert those down into the hole on top of the furnace into the crucible. We'll go to about 2100. 2200 degrees on the metal. We want to pour it at about 21, somewhere in the neighborhood of 2100. And then we go to the furnace, open the top of the furnace, we'll skim off any impurity that might be in the metal that came up. We'll skim it at that point. And we have a chain horse that rolls on a trolley, comes over, sets an apparatus down on it, which is a lifting shank. And it has an arm on it we lift up and it closes against the crucible that's down in the furnace. We lift that up. Are you hot yet? Okay. And it rolls down to where the pouring shank is, which is a, like a set of handlebars on one end and a rod on the other. We set that hot crucible in the middle down in there. We lift that back up with the chain hoist and it holds it in a frame where that we can roll it back over to the hot mold and then we can tip it and pour in the hot metal into the opening of the ceramic mold. Get that other Come on to me. We pour that and we watch we haven't missed a crack or a hole uh, that developed and we missed. Be sure they're not leaking somewhere. We pour those, they feed back through those sprue rods that we welded on earlier, which were red, red wax. They've been melted away. So that becomes all your plumbing system of pouring uh, at the end. You fill that main sprue rod with metal and it flows out into all those crevices and fills up the image. 
we will shut the furnace down. We will clean the crucible. Well, if there's any metal left, we'll pour it off into ingots to be remelted. And about within 5 to 10, 15 minutes, somewhere in that range, you'll start hearing some of the cracking going on. The molds are starting to cool down. And they start cracking. And at that point, we know that we're close to a point where we can lift those molds back out of there, lay them down, and then just tap them a little bit with a hammer. And then we'll start showing us the image that we started back at the flat.